January 16th, South Carolina. Daniel Morgan can no longer avoid confronting Tarleton's forces. Now, he must prepare to fight. On the eve of their battle, Morgan visits with his troops. Out of 600 men, more than half are militia. The same untrained forces that were last seen fleeing the field at Camden. Morgan's challenge? Make them engage. As he faces the most grueling battle of his life, Morgan rallies these citizen soldiers. Just hold up your head, boys. And when you return to your homes, how the old folks will bless you for your gallant conduct. Daniel Morgan. Morgan has great rapport with his troops. He loves to joke with them, to talk with them. I think they really just find him one of the great officers they've ever served under. He tells them things like, we'll have you home soon, boys, to kiss your girlfriends. January 17th. On a mild winter morning, the battle takes shape on a field known as cow pens. Here, Morgan puts into play his own new strategy, one of the most inventive of the war and most timely. Up to that point in the war, nobody had figured out how to use militia in a formal battle because they weren't trained to meet British regulars in a formal engagement. Morgan, he figures it out. Like others before him, Morgan puts his militia out front, the first line to meet Tarleton's charging British soldiers. Only this time, he tells them to fire just two shots, a quick volley, and then fall back. Against the onslaught of the British charge, they do just that. When the British see this, they think that they have earned a replay of Canada that they have essentially caused a rout of the militia forces who are breaking from the field. They will pursue a headlong rush and find themselves facing the very well-directed volley fires of Morgan's regulars. The result is predictable for Tarleton's Legion. Bannister Tarleton, the aggressive and ambitious young officer, drives right into Morgan's trap. The Continentals reply with alarming force. British infantry scatter and retreat. Tarleton will try to push them on again, but within an hour, the battle is lost. Tarleton has chased Morgan all across the south to end here, defeated by the rough and tumble American at Cowpens. Talk about a conflict of styles. You have this very sort of arrogant, dashing, cruel British officer, young guy, and Daniel Morgan. And they're both playing for keeps, you know? How can you not love that victory when um, Daniel Morgan just beats the tar out of Tarleton? Most of the entire British detachment at Cowpens is killed, captured, or wounded. This time, it is bloody Bannister Tarleton who is seen fleeing the field. He will escape, soon to rejoin Cornwallis's army, thirsting for revenge. It was Morgan's whim. Morgan had outplanned, outstrategized, and outled his counterpart. He had transformed his militia army at their moment of greatest need. But it will be the backcountry brawler's last battle. Morgan, all along, suffered quietly from painful back ailments and rheumatism. Why is he retiring now? He's just won this big, monumental victory. 
And the real question is, how was he able to fight at all during the Battle of Cowpens? It's very painful for him. And his commanding officer, Nathaniel Green, says, you've earned the right to go home. Morgan, who had spent a lifetime of fighting, will now watch the war from a small farm in Virginia, from the sidelines.